So this afternoon we're going to look at, well first of all, five reasons why you should consider Mobile Device Manager, but within that we'll dive in a little bit deeper. We've got a, a nice little demo lined up and some things to look at and we'll cover over a few topics and at the end we'll have a question and answer session so that you can uh, pop through with any information, you know, any question that, that come up from the, uh, the session. At any time you um, you have a, a bit of a glitch, uh, if the screen's not catching up, something like that, just uh, raise your, ha uh, your hand uh, electronically and let us know and we'll just uh, stop and regroup for you. So my name's David Hendrickson, I'm the Senior Solutions Engineer here at Soft Solutions looking after the Manage Engine product suite of uh, uh, IT management tools and joining me is Arsh Singh, our pre-sales support. He'll be helping with the demo, very ably going to assist with the, the hands-on with an actual device. So we won't just um, say what the tool can do, we're going to show you a few things as well. So what are some of the reasons you might consider it? We, in some of the marketing material we pushed out, we did mention these. Obviously, like all of the Manage Engine products, Mobile Device Manager is affordable. So the starting point, well in fact the starting point isn't $22, it's actually free for up to 25 devices. So that's a great way if you have a small requirement of devices, you can actually get started for free. That is a fully functional product, there are no restrictions apart from the device count. No ads, no nonsense. For 50 devices it's an annual subscription and we do have an option as well for a perpetual license so we start at that $22 per device and as you go up to larger device counts that number will drop. We support the three main mobile platforms, obviously iOS, Android and Windows Mobile. It can be either an on-site, on-premise application, you can also install that same version in the public cloud, for example uh, AWS, Azure, and it's also available as a software as a service model which Manage Engine calls on demand. There is a third version that you can use and that is integrated into our desktop client device management tool which is called Desktop Central, so that also has the MDM module with the same functionality. And in fact we will act for, we'll be demonstrating the tool today using Desktop Central and the MDM module in there. The last two points, feature rich and easy to use, well for anyone who is familiar with Manage Engine applications that is pretty much a given. We, the Manage Engine developers and team work very hard to provide powerful tools with a good range of features that are easy to use and of course as we say at the top are, are affordable as well. So MDM brings a number of challenges to, to organisations and perhaps the biggest one which isn't listed there is the fact that mobile devices started out as personal devices very much like the original PC, as the name implied, personal computer. They had no management capability and those who have been in the industry a while may well remember the days of having to go from desktop to desktop manually configuring one machine after the other. And the early mobile devices, the, the first iPhones, the early Androids were very much in the same boat. I have memories of, of getting a student in to sit down with a whole box of iPads and setting them up one after the other and that's an inefficient way, particularly if you have a large number of devices. As they have developed, the manageability in the mobile operating systems has been developed as well. And one thing that's quite important to, to keep in mind, that Manage Engine use the official APIs and functionality. So some tools actually require you to root an Android device or jailbreak an iOS device to gain additional functionality. We don't do any of that in the Manage Engine tool, it's all primarily using the standard available things. Because rooting or jailbreaking devices adds more security risks than perhaps it, that, that, than is beneficial given the functionality that you might add. But the key challenges that face most admins with these devices, first of all, as I've intimated, 
the need for centralised management. So you, a, a common console where you can manage and control all of the mobile devices across the organisation. The next area of importance is controlling and managing corporate email. So not just pushing out the uh, the mail configurations to the device, but also working out where can attachments be opened and saved, who has access. And as part of that, the very real risk that anyone can come along and suddenly decide, oh, I know what the uh, mail server address is, it's in uh, OWA, I know my network credentials, so therefore I could go in and set up a mail account on my device. So we don't want that to, to happen, we want to control the people that might access the corporate email. There's also a need to restrict the use of some features. And a good example is the camera. Some organisations have security requirements that mean that the camera is not desirable. It may be, they may be, for example, to prevent documents being photographed, or perhaps in an industrial environment, prototypes in a development lab may be photographed. Other areas it could be for privacy reasons where it's undesirable for people in the organisation to, to be photographed or customers to be photographed. So we might want to turn those sort of features off. App deployment, of course, is a, a, another important area from their personal device routes. Um, all of the major mobile platforms have various app stores and some mechanisms, particularly for example with Android, to sideload apps as well. We need to be able to push out and deploy corporate apps whilst having control over non-desirable um, apps, blacklist them or restrict them in some way. Phones, of course, have always been popular target for theft and are also unfortunately lost relatively easy. More, you know, quite often they're left sitting on bars or coffee, um, cafe counters. So we need to be able to protect the corporate data if that device has been lost or stolen. And the last ever increasing challenge that many face now is the rise of the bring your own device. So we're moving quickly from a point where phones were simply issued by the organisation to the staff to the point when that people are now said, well, you know, you're welcome to bring your own phone. Uh, some people put uh, restrictions on it, it must be iOS, it must be Android, but there's an increasing desire from both employees to have a, the device of their choice and also from organisations perhaps who, rather than having to purchase devices, can make use of ones that their staff already own. So we need to have effective means of managing those devices without intruding on any personal data that the individual user has and of course properly segregating the personal and the corporate data from each other. So the MDM tool has a good range of features to help in this particular area. So I'll run over them fairly quickly. You I want to move to the demo rather than sit there and, uh, and just talk about it endlessly. But the key points that, uh, that really make the solution powerful, the ability of course for over the air management, and that's core of really for any MDM tool, is that you don't want to have to bring all of your devices into the office to physically manage them. The, the, the configurations, the apps, everything have to be able to be pushed out over the air. And that's whether the device is on your corporate network or connected to mobile data somewhere else in the outside world. We need to be able to do policy and profile management. So in that, in Mobile Device Manager Plus, the policies are used to push out things like setting passcodes, putting restrictions on the device, perhaps bringing it up in kiosk mode where it's restricted to one or two apps. Also configuration, for example, VPNs or Wi-Fi. Managing emails is again a very important area as I've stressed not only provisioning accounts, but also controlling what we do with attachments, restricting emails moving between different email accounts, and restricting other apps from sending email. So if it's particularly a BYOD device, you may not want um, apps that the user has installed being able to send using the corporate email account. 
For BYOD devices, of course, we need to containerize corporate data and separate have a separate policy strategy to manage those compared to the corporate devices and obviously leaving the owner's data untouched. Managing applications, of course, not only distri uh, distributing the apps and control blacklisting uh, other apps, but also handling things such as uh, enterprise apps, volume purchasing and so forth, the ability to push them out and handle your own so you can set up things like an enterprise app store. Security management allows us to do things like forcibly encrypting a device, remotely locking a device if it's been lost, remote and corporate wipes, um, managing passcodes, and also very important is detecting rooted or jailbroken devices that are on the network. In our asset management, we would be we look at functionality around geo tracking, so where the device is actually located. The actual network details and hardware information of individual devices, installed apps, uh, any certificates that have been installed and restrictions that have been pushed out. And a very important component of managing mobile devices is around auditing and reporting so that we can see what is being done, uh, what apps for example have been installed directly by the user on a BYOD device. Um, also reports on what apps are installed, um, where the device is being used, there's a whole range of different reports that we can bring out to give you full insight into what's happening across your mobile devices in the network. So at this point let's jump onto the tool itself and we'll do a bit of a run through. I'll explain some of the features in a bit more detail and hopefully from that you'll see that yes it certainly is very straightforward and easy to use and as part of that we will be pushing out some profiles and configurations to a test device so that you can see it in action. As I mentioned, we are actually using the MDM component within Desktop Central. So this is exactly the same as Mobile Device Manager, it's just from a technical standpoint I can't put both of them together on the same network. But everything that you see here is also looks and feels and works exactly the same way in Mobile Device Manager as well. So the first core component of working with your mobile devices, of course, is enrolment. We have to get the devices added into the MDM tool in order to manage them. And we have a number of strategies available for that. The very simplest is called self-enrolment. So we simply have a URL that's available that you, can, that you can share with the users. You can even encode that, for example, into a QR code, post that up on the wall, the users can scan that. When they go to that page, they will be request, required to enter their email address and domain credentials so that they can be authenticated that they are domain users and, and therefore um, able and allowed to register in the MDM. And the other choice that they will be given is, is it a corporate or a personally owned device? So for each of those options across iOS, Android and Windows, we can choose the default po um, policy and that will be applied to that particular device. And as we move forward, I'll show you how we can set those policies up so that when a user enrolls, the standard configuration restrictions and other settings will then be automatically deployed out to their device. The next area is in the Android space and that is NFC enrolment. So that works, obviously the device needs to be physically accessible to the administrator so that would be a case where you have new devices that you're issuing out to, you, to your users. You would install the enrolment app on the, ad, the admin's device, you simply, as the graphic shows, you bump it against the new device to enrol, 
select the user and that's how it works. Fortunately, I don't have an Android device available for, uh, for us to demo on that. Certainly if that's, that's something, and any of these features I should stress, if you are interested in going into more depth, please do get in touch with us. I'll, sh I'll put up the contact details at the end of the webinar and we'll be happy to arrange a one-on-one -on -one demo with you or even help you set up a proof of concept on your network. We can do a batch enrolment as well. I won't show you the on the screen, but we can. With that, you can bring in a CSV files and of available of your users, and that will just email off a link that they can the users can click on to take on their device to take them to the enrolment screen. The next area of enrolments are around what we call corporate or managed enrolments. So up till now they're still typically a, what we call a personal device enrolment, but enrolling as a corporate or managed type device gives a considerably higher level of management capabilities. So the first of these is the Apple DEP enrolment. Now that is a, a, I don't know the exact cost, but that is a paid service provided by Apple. So you have the device enrolment portal. We push out a key certificate from the MDM tool, which is uploaded to Apple. And at that point, you use the, uh, the Apple console to add the devices. Now that brings the device up in what Apple calls supervised mode, which provides the highest level of management, and also gives the capability that even if the device is completely factory reset, when it comes back up, it will be automatically re-enrolled. So there is no way to, to take the device out of the corporate setting. You can obviously lock it so a thief for, can't get into it, but they can't de-enroll it and make it a personal device. In a similar vein, we have the Apple Configurator, which again is designed to bring the device up in supervised mode. Now the difference is with the Apple Configurator is that that allows you to uh, set it up with the, you push the profile out from the MDM tool and into the Apple Configurator and then link it, push it out to the devices. Now the one constraint you have there is that you must have a Mac. The Apple configurator is only available on a Mac, so that's, it's obviously Apple like to keep their, uh, their ecosystem uh, in-house, but that certainly is a, again a powerful way. That does require you, as with the Apple DEP, that that has to be an initial clean start with the device, so you can't take an existing iOS device and convert it. But as we look at the profiles, you will discover that the level of manageability that you have for supervised Apple devices is considerably higher than you would have for just a standard enrolled Apple device. The next one we, that is supported is the Knox platform. So that's a Samsung feature. It's effectively a secure corporate container that exists on, on selected Samsung devices. So whilst you need for the full NOx setup, you do need to have a license from Samsung, the NOx enrolment is at currently available for free. Now like the uh, Apple DEP, if you enrol a NOx device using the NOx enrolment from the Samsung website, again it is a permanent. So if you again reset the device, the NOx container and management will be reapplied with the, again with the restrictions that you've set up. So it's again it's a permanent MDM um, method that will survive a complete reset. Final method for your Windows phone is the Windows Imaging and Config Designer, which is again an application that Microsoft put together in this case for doing the initial setup for Windows mobile devices. So the method of setting that up is very similar. We download the automation tool and put it into the ICD system, set it up, and from that point on you connect the phone through USB and it pushes out the PPKG file onto the phone and brings it up in managed mode.
So once our devices are in the environment, we then can start the process of doing our management. One of the core functionalities here is around groups. So we have the, obviously these are the default groups that are actually set up in the tool from, from the get-go. You can create your own groups as well. And, by, and as you can see, we have Android, iOS, Windows, personal and corporate. And you might recall that in the self-enrolment screen that was linked to as the default groups for each one of that particular type of device. So we have pre-enrolled a phone at the moment under iOS personal, and that's sitting in here. The value of a group is that we can associate a series of management profiles to the entire group. So rather than having to do your management device by device, we can set up groups not just for different types of device, but obviously within that for different staff job functions requirements. So people who require a, a more strict MDM policy can be set up in a different group. When the device is added to that group, the relevant policy will be applied straight away. I'll run quickly through the capabilities of the profiles. They're quite the profiles are the, the, the core of the management capability, particularly around pushing out configurations and restrictions. The profiles will differ depending on the device. So I'll start with a high. We'll just run through at the high level. These are the this is the functionality that is that's made available within iOS. And as I look at the different the different levels, obviously here we can set passcodes. If I look at restrictions, you might notice these little icons here. That icon here means that that feature is only available on a supervised device. So if you've bought the Apple device up using the configurator or the enrolment program as a supervised device, you can configure, for example, to restrict FaceTime. We also, you also might notice these little numbers which show the version of iOS that allows that feature to be supported. And it's important to, to mention that as the phone vendors enhance their operating systems and allow add more features and just as importantly provide more management capability, the team at Manage Engine are busy with each new release to they, they grab the device up, you know, take a look, go through the APIs and work to add that particular functionality into the application. So obviously you can see there are quite a large number of restrictions that are available for iOS devices. So for example here again, supervised devices you can control installing and deleting apps. So there's I won't run through every one of these. It would probably take up half the afternoon. Again, if you if any of these are of interest and you want to get some more deep dive information, certainly um, get in touch and we can go through with offline with you on a one-on-one -on -one session. I'll just quickly cancel out there and again just take a look at an Android profile. Just to, and you'll notice we Within the Android world, we have the ability to create a profile for the device or for the Samsung devices, the Knox container within the device, which is where your corporate information would be kept. So I'll quickly look at the, the device functionality. One thing obviously, as you can see, the, the range is a little bit smaller than we see under Apple. However, the restrictions that are there are a little bit uh, less. We don't obviously have the supervised mode. And again, some of them, for example, are in safe devices. There is a thing called device. There's two ways of actually managing an Android device as device owner or which will control the amount of functionality. I won't go into the, the technical uh, the details of that, but it is an important thing if you do plan to work with Android devices to clearly understand how that works because it will have an effect on the functionality that you have.
and likewise I won't run through it but there is a, there's a similar range of functionality available for the Knox containers on your Android devices and likewise for Windows Mobile. Now you have the ability to create either a series of different profiles, which is what I've done here. So I've got one to configure the, the mail, there's one to turn off the app store, one to turn off the camera, one to restrict attachments and so forth. But you also have the ability to build a single profile with all of those settings contained within it. There's advantages both ways. The, the all-in-one is a bit simpler to work with, but this gives you a more granular approach for individual devices. So at this stage, let's actually, I'll turn the webcam on and Ash will grab our target phone. So. so I hope you, can, you are able to see that. So, uh, so initially Ash, I'm just going to show you that there is no passcode. This is an iPhone 5, so it doesn't have a fingerprint scanner. So he's just able to go straight in without the passcode. Um, if we take a look at the email, you'll notice that there is just a single personal email account that's in there. And beyond that, that's just a typical personal owned device. Now we have already set that up. If you just swipe across. Is, are you enrolled? Don't know if you are. Well, We'll, we'll, we'll actually, uh, let's just check the devices. So we'll, we're, we're going to do the full hog and we'll actually enrol the device as well. So I'll sh we'll do a personal enrolment. So I might just, I've had a bit more experience doing that. So we'll just jump into our browser. So that now brings us to the enrolment screen and I'll just pass that on to Ash, he's going to put his details in. So at this stage we, as I mentioned earlier, for a, a self-enrolment we simply need the user's email address, their domain login and their password. Arsh will also be selecting that his domain and whether it's a personal or corporate device. So in this case he will pick that it's a personal device. Just, we don't want to save our password in that particular case. So at this point we have to install a profile, so a certificate that's going to be put on. So at this point we just complete the management process. If I refresh the inventory page we will now see that Ash on the test iPhone has been added to MDM. So we're going to, this is the app catalogue, we're going to install the MDM app at the bottom. Now it's not the MDM app adds some additional functionality, it's not necessary to have it to do some management, but it will add some capabilities which include um, the geolocation and the uh, ability to have the secure app uh, data container for attachments. So that install will take a moment or two, you can see now it has opened and created the MDM app, so that's all there and ready to go. So with that in place, we will now push an email profile out so that Ash can access his corporate email. So I'll come in here, look at the devices. 
I won't do it through a group in this case, I will just associate the profile directly to the individual device. So in this case, the first one we're going to do is configure email. I just pointed the little number next to that is a version number, so it, it gives you an indication of how many edits or changes you've made to a particular profile. Now again, I could select multiple profiles at, and push them out at once. In this case, for the sake of the demo, I'll just push out the single profile. So this will now push out the mail configurations for uh, Exchange Active Sync directly to Marsh's phone. So that takes a moment or two. While that's happening, I'll just mention there's a thing here called con conditional exchange access. So Ash Distancing has now been asked for his network password so that he can complete his install. One of the challenges I mentioned earlier is to prevent unauthorised devices connecting to your exchange. So with conditional exchange access, the MDM program will connect to the exchange server and set it up in such a way that it will not permit active sync connections to be made manually. So only one that's been pushed out from the MDM application will be accepted. So now if you look on the webcam you'll see that the corporate mail is there and Ash has his email. So it was as easy as that to push them out. And if I actually show you what's in the particular profile, you'll see it's very simple. So the two things that we did, Exchange Active Sync, we've given our host name, we pass through domain name, username and email address as a variable, so that takes the details that from the user assigned to the device. We can push a password if we had a common one, normally as we saw you leave that blank for the user to put, to put through. You'll also notice I've put some restrictions in around security and the key one that I've put in, share data for managed apps to unmanaged has been set to restricted and I could also do the reverse block from unmanaged to manage. And what that has done is prevented Ash from opening an email attachment and saving it to any other app on the device. So for example, he couldn't save that email address into Dropbox or put it into Facebook or anything like that. The attachment can only be saved to the MDM app itself. And within the MDM app there's a document store or documents folder. There won't be anything in there because we haven't done it, but that is the only place that those saved attachments can be kept and viewed. And they can, again, from that MDM app, they cannot be put anywhere else on the device. For example, you can't attach them into a non-corporate email. So let's put some other restrictions in uh, onto Arsh's device. We don't want him taking photos. It's not a particularly good thing. So oh, he's in his camera already, so we'll soon fix that. Again, associate profile, and while I'm at it, I'm going, to, I'm going to say no camera, and I also don't want him going on the App Store or onto iTunes, so I've disabled that. It's the same thing, we'll push that out, and within a moment, there we are, the camera has just been closed and has gone away, and as well, the icons for both iTunes and the App Store have been removed. Final step that we'll do to secure this down a little bit is you might have noticed we didn't have a passcode set on that device, so we'll take care of that as well. So at the moment Ash can just go straight in and access it, so I've got one here to set a passcode. In this case I've specified a four character passcode. So next time Ash, that'll push out, next time Ash opens up the phone he will get an instruction to set a passcode. 
There we are. So that's now saying you must set a passcode and you have a 60 minute window of grace to do that. So at this point Ash can set up his passcode and we're a little bit happier that the phone is secured, can set up with the email and ready to go. Now as I mentioned, typically you would push all of those profiles out together and have them in place the moment the phone was brought up on the management. So let's now look, take a look at the app deployment and management, which is another important area. So the screen we're looking at here manages your in, is your internal app catalogue that's available. So we can add apps from the three main app stores, and we can add enterprise apps, so they're the ones that you have built yourself. So you can just go out there, set, link into the store, and that will then download the appropriate app for the correct environment. From that point we can then decide, with, we can modify the settings and we can also then publish the app so that it's available in the App Store. For paid apps, we support both the volume purchase for iOS, so you set up your keys and that gives you the advantages of being able to install the apps without needing any Apple IDs, distribute the apps to the supervised devices and manage the app licenses, which is quite important for paid apps. That can be quite a headache if you're trying to do that in a manual manner. We also support Android, Android for Work, which is a more recent innovation. It's a variation on the Play Store that allows you to, first of all, control the store content for, for corporate work, and you also have the ability to, using Android for Work, to push apps out onto devices. So that provides, again, a similar capability to the Apple Supervised mode. Likely, likewise the uh, window app settings. So for the phones that have the, um, the supervised mode or Android for work, you can push the apps out directly. For phones that aren't in there, I'll just pop the webcam back on and I shall show you that we have within the MDM app, you, we saw it briefly before, but we'll just show you again. You can go in into the app catalogue, which is at the top, and these are the different apps that have been made available in the organisation for the user that the users are allowed to install. And you can send out notifications to the users requesting that they should install a particular app. So that's how we can push it out for the devices that aren't in the managed modes. Obviously managed devices like supervised mode, we can go the stage further and just push the apps out to the phone directly. Next year we'll look at is the inventory management, and this is where we provide details on all of the devices that you are managing across the organisation. So we have a, a group by device type, smartphone, tablets and others, the, and the platforms concerned. So we can drill in and get quite a lot of information about the individual device. This is just a high level summary view, but we can go in and get the full hardware information, firmware versions, serial numbers, right down to the, the disk space that is free, even the battery level. Likewise information on the network and the SIM card that's installed on the phone at the present time. This is our list of installed apps on the phone. And you notice we know, for example, that this app was user installed as a BYOD device and this app was distributed by MDM. 
any certificates that are on the device, any restrictions, and of course geo-tracking. And of course we can see that yes, the device is sitting right here in our office in Newmarket. Now the, um, the geo-tracking, just to point out, is either on or off, so we don't currently have the ability to uh, do it by time of day. But another option that's quite good is that you can leave it off, but if the device is turned into what we call lost mode, it will then turn on tracking. There is, from a privacy point of view, it does not maintain any kind of history, so you can't bring up a screen and see exactly where the user of that phone has been, but it's designed more from a ma the management point of view, where is the device physically located. And the, the principal value, of course, is if it has been lost or stolen, you know where it is. In that scenario, particularly with lost mode, um, again, Apple supervised devices have the most control, for example, there you can actually even prevent the device from being turned off so that you can you maintain manageability of it so that you've got the you can wipe it or lock it. We can also look at from an uh, a management point of view all of the apps that are installed across all devices. So this is the full discovered list. We have the ability to blacklist or whitelist apps. Now, we can't always uninstall them. That, again, depends on the level of management. So, for example, a supervised device, you certainly can uninstall the app. Otherwise, if it's a blacklisted app, the user will be given constant reminders to remove the app. So that, that will pop up every day to say, you have something or other installed, please take it off. And you have control over whether you treat all nude apps that have come in as automatically whitelisted or automatically blacklisted. And we can, for example, restrict installations to only whitelisted apps. From an app point of view, we get a, high, a summary view of the different devices, app count, how many whitelisted, how many blacklisted, and we can drill in and get information from there. And how do we manage the apps? Do By default, we turn off the pre-installed ones. That would add quite a large list that really are not that manageable. And we can then look at distributed by MDM, user installed, how do we handle newly detected apps, automatically white or blacklisted? What do we do here for um, blacklisted apps? So that will vary. iOS, Android and Windows is about notification. Safe and Knox, we can, dis we can go as far as disable, uninstall. Location data is similar to the, the uh, individual GPS mode. It just gives a high level view of where all the devices are. Now, in actual fact, I should point out that this, this particular device is not sitting in the parking lot next door. It just, that particular phone doesn't have a SIM card in it, and it's only connected on Wi-Fi, so the, and it's sitting in the building, so the GPS can't pull any data. So the location accuracy in that situation can be a little bit, a little bit loose, but generally, if the phone knows exactly where it is, the MDM tool will as well. We can do data scans of all of the connected devices and that will can be scheduled and done on demand at any particular time. So next area we'll look at is auditing. So this gives a list of all of the activity that's happening within the, the MDM tool and the list of managed devices. So obviously at the top you can see what we've been doing here. So we have, uh, we've enrolled, scanned, 
installed the MDM app and pushed out some profiles to our test phone. So we've got a full list of the activity that's taken place. We can change the date range and filter that down. So you'd notice we can do things um, further down. We have uh, apps installed. I think that's on the next page. So we can say we've uh, distributed apps. We can we can note down the bottom, for example, that an app has been detected, so that's been installed on a phone. So we have that full audit data of what has been happening. Finally, the range of reports. I won't drill into all of the reports. The, the title is probably fairly self-explanatory about um, what the report will tell you. We can certainly look at what's happening amongst apps, about hardware, and the enrolment, and of course security. And again, things, for example, where storage encryption, cloud backups, passcodes, routed jailbreak and devices are reports that are worth looking at on a, regu a fairly regular basis just to make sure that you have a good handle on the security nature in the environment. So the last thing that I'm going to do, and we'll turn the webcam back on again, is show you what can happen, what we do when someone, in this case a BYOD device, they might be planning to leave the organisation. So we'll go to our test iPhone. So obviously, we, if the device was lost, we could remotely lock it or put lost mode on, which will actually bring up a special screen saying, I'm lost, please contact this number, as well as controlling that no one can get into the device. But in our case, we're going to do what's called a corporate wipe. So that will remove all of the settings that we've pushed out. It will remove any documents that are stored in the MDM app and the app as well. It will remove the uh, email profile that's been set up. However, it will not affect any of the user's own data. So I will kick that off now. Because of what we're doing, it's a fairly destructive um, outcome. So it does require a password from the user, just to ensure that you don't do it by mistake. And at this point, it will go out, it takes a moment or two, but you can see some things already happening. The camera's back, the App Store and the uh, and iTunes have, have reappeared. The MDM app has gone away. And in a moment or two, we'll also find that the email account has been removed as well. So at this point, Ash's phone is no longer a, a corporate BYOD device, it's back to being his personal phone again. And we can be quite confident in doing that, that all of the corporate information on that device has been removed. So at this point we will throw look at some um, questions that have come through and if, you know, if you do have any other questions please uh, put them through. Um, okay, so just going for the first one, um, camera control. Um, at this point it, there's no geofencing so the, um, the restriction is global at this point so it's either turned on or it's turned off. Just skipping around. The, in terms of, it's another question, if we use iOS or Nox in permanent mode and the employee decides to upgrade and sell the old phone, I'd have, I will have to just check on that. I haven't 
I'll get back to you on that particular question, how do we overcome the permanent connection, that would be, I understand that has to be done through, through the connection through to Samsung to turn that off. Um, can the app be removed by the user and can the uninstall be prevented? In, now that again will depend on how the device has been added into uh, MDM. So if it's a self-enrolled or what I, what I call a, a non-managed mode, in, there are circumstances where a determined user can, although we've got settings to disable the uninstall of the MDM app and unmanaging the device, because it's a personal device, for example an Android device, if you know how to, to do the admin unlock, you can take just uh, remove the management capability. In doing that, all of the data that's been pushed out though does get, and the settings does get pulled out as well. Um, the uh, if you bring a device up in a managed mode, like uh, um, supervised mode, then it is not possible to remove that. Um, Next one, I'll, I'll come back to your question in a sec, Paul. Uh, remote control is a good a good question. Android remote control is supported. Um, it, the capability will again it depend on the device. Uh, in some cases, it's simply a screen share. Um, certain Samsung devices provide the ability to uh, to control the device as well. In terms of Apple, it is it's it currently a breach of the Apple, the iTunes Store terms and conditions to provide any app that offers remote control capability on an iOS device. So any solution that, that states that it provides iOS remote control does actually require the device to be jailbroken first. So it's not something that is official, that is condoned or welcomed by Apple. So at this stage, our response is no, we can't remote control Apple. Uh, when at such times Apple decides to change their approach, we certainly could do that. Um, Paul's popped in a question about the app UI um, tracking, uh, well the, the app data tracking, I'll just flick across and have it and go back to the device and we'll see if we can find that. Oh, oh the app data usage tracker. Now that in this particular case this is not, did I get that? That's looping, okay. I think that is, can you use, ah, that's the one. Yes. I mean, I'm not actually finding that, sorry. I actually suspect... Now, I, did, I was looking in the roadmap before and there, there was some information that, that there is quite a lot of interest in data usage tracking, so I think that link is actually is cycling to the wrong place, because that is, you do, you do find a few features, you know, view roadmap, which is in here, I'll bring that up, just because it gives you a good indication. So one thing that's really important to, to understand with Manage Engine is that the development teams are very responsive to user requests. The feature set and roadmap is very strongly driven by the user community. So in this particular case we've 
there's been quite a lot of feedback and requests for that particular uh, data usage tracking, so that will be likely to be in the uh, in the tool as it comes up. <laughs> and just looking through here, there's some things, more policies, mobile OS update management. One area, of course, that's becoming a, an increasing feature is Office 365 and Exchange Online, so the, the teams are working on adding capability in those areas as well. So I'll just pop the uh, slide back up again so that you can see that please, uh, if you do have any other questions or um, need information, those are our contact numbers that you can reach us. So that we're in Auckland, 09 3060450 or email sales at manageengine.co.nz. And as I said, if you'd like a you know, personal demo, a, a deep dive uh, more into the capabilities, or as I said, some assistance uh, getting the demo and a proof of concept up and running your environment, please do get in touch. So I'd certainly like to thank you all for joining us this afternoon. I hope you gained some uh, some value there, and as I said, you know, pop off to the Manage Engine website as well. There's uh, quite a lot of information, and there's a link for the free trial version so that you can do, or you can sign up for the cloud version. So again, thank you. Good afternoon.